It's always a delight to have you join us on Lagos Parliament, the program that brings your legislature closer to the people. I'm a regular host, Abimbola Agbebi. Now, as the kidnap of the six students of the secondary school in Lagos enters day 35, the question that naturally pops up in the minds of the people is, what is the government doing to secure their release? Now, just a few days ago, reassuring words came from the executive arm on its determination to bring the children back alive. As Lagosians await the release of the kidnapped students, Lagos Parliament this week will be focusing on the anti-kidnapping law passed by the House, which is intended to stem the tide of kidnapping in the state, will also be featuring efforts put in place by the legislature in ensuring that the kidnapped students are brought back home to their parents alive. I welcome you once again. Get closer to your legislators. See them in action as they deliberate on moving the state forward. Watch updates on weekly events, presentation of bills, passage of laws, adoption of resolutions, and many more. Also, get a chance to meet the lawmaker of the week and watch the legislators. Observe plenary in Yoruba language. Lagos Parliament, every Thursday, 7.30 p.m. and Sunday, 11 a.m. respectively on TVC News Nigeria and TVC Entertainment. Lagos Parliament, bringing the legislators closer to you. When the bill for a law to prohibit the act of kidnapping in the state was passed by the State House of Assembly, it was intended to stem the tide of kidnapping within the metropolis. You will recall that certain sections of that law spelled out stringent punishments such as death penalty for the offender, especially in the case of the death of the kidnapped persons in captivity. In this episode, in the light of the upsurge in kidnapping in the state, we'd like you to see proceedings of the House just before that law was passed. It was called around 8 o'clock that the father has been kidnapped. I quite agree with you that we need to do something. The provision of the Constitution allows the state to take charge of its security. Today is a monarch from Iba. Who knows who will be the next? After months of intense legislative procedures on the bill that prohibits kidnapping in the state, the House finally passed the bill into law, having scaled through third reading. The bill for a law to provide for the prohibition of the act of kidnapping and for connected purposes be passed into law. All in favor say aye. Those against the, the eyes of it. Mr. Clark, kindly do the needful by sending the clear copy to His Excellency for his accent. These lawmakers had found very worrisome a surge in the activities of kidnappers in the state. This gave rise to the anti-kidnapping law which was strengthened to take care of the lacuna that once existed in the existing criminal law of the state. For a very long time, people commit various offenses for different reasons and you notice that the criminal code and the laws of Lagos State have um, sufficiently addressed the issue of such indecent behavior of kidnapping people but I notice that any law that you know is not specifically criminalized any offense that is not specifically criminalized, people tend to, uh, and we leave such laws at the discretion of the, the, the court, people tend to, you know, misbehave and do a lot of things. Now, when you look at the existing law currently, um, the law for uh, prohibits um, kidnapping are not related at, but people still, there's, it's, there, there's no specific punishment for it. Now, what legal state is trying to do is to fill the lacuna. Laws are made not to last forever sometimes. We try as, as much as possible to ensure that they are robust enough to last a long time. But as we use laws to address societal issues, I don't want to say ills because it might be for good sometimes. So yes, there was, uh, there is, was, let me say there is a law 
on kidnapping, I think it's section 271 of the current um, laws of the state. But it needs some revamping to meet the needs of our time. Understand? So that is why we have looked at that law to ensure that something stronger will be put in this law. For instance, off the cuff, I can tell you, that law says nothing about conspiracy. When two people connive to kidnap, what happens to the conniver? And it doesn't say anything about forfeiture of properties. You understand? So we need to always um, upgrade our laws, if you have, for want of a better word, to meet the needs of the time. Criminal code law of Lagos State, which is an extant law that has to do with general criminal matters, the, there are three sections there that prohibit uh, the act of kidnapping. Kidnapping is an age long offense, it's not, uh, it's, not, it's not a recent offense, it's not a new thing. So, but because of the upsurge, that's why we now develop a special approach, a mechanized and an empirical, a more uh, elaborate a more complex approach to tackling and uh, you know providing deterrence to the emerging trend of kidnapping in Lagos State. The to the extent that we have uh, you know initiated uh, enacted this new law, those three sections that relate with kidnapping in the extant criminal code law of Lagos State will stand repealed as on the date of uh, commencement of this new law. With the bill passed into law, stiffer penalties now await kidnappers with the section of the law stipulating death penalty for kidnappers in cases where the victims die in captivity. I must remind you, this bill was sponsored by the Mr. Speaker, Right Honorable Mudashi Obasa, as the Speaker of the Lagos State House of Assembly. Um, basically, the, the law tries to graduate the various punishment that you have. It stems from death sentence to as low as two years in three years imprisonment. The 2016 anti-kidnapping bill was thereafter signed into law by the state governor Akiumi Ambode, raising the hopes of many as Lagos residents patiently await the end of the heinous act in the state. But the story changed as residents of Ekbe woke up to the sad news of their children who were taken from their hostel by some unknown gunmen on the 18th of May. Yet another one was recorded in the Korudu area of Lagos, where a family of five was brutally killed by a famous terror group in the state. Both incidents caught the attention of the house, triggering another call for heightened security in these communities. The twin incident that took place in Ikorodu and Ekbe communities in the riverine areas of the state took center stage at the day's plenary. The killing of an entire family in Ikorodu and the kidnap of some students in the Ekbe environs was discussed. Notorious moving evil known as Bado in Ikorodu. Just last week, the same set of evil descended on a house around Erunwe, killed the husband, killed the two children, killed the wife who was pregnant, and actually removed the fortress from the woman. It is so barbaric, and as much as security agents have been trying, they find it difficult to unravel the cause of it. The lawmakers were not only moved by the brutal killing of the family, they were more worried about the continued attacks by the terror gang in the community. I must thank the prime mover of uh, this particular issue concerning the Bado. I think the incident is becoming very, very unbecoming. I, I, we, we have the same incident occurring even in my own constituency in Agboa some few months back. And I think it is important that uh, we also look at the second leg of uh, his uh, position. While calling on the state commissioner of police to launch more investigations into the crime, the lawmaker has expressed displeasure that the presence of the state's neighbor safety corps has not been felt within Lagos communities. I agree with you that the necessary committee should call on the uh, neighborhood um, safety corps to come and explain to us they are not established to sit in their office no, they are established to perform certain functions that has to do with security. 
to mingle with people, to identify the bad eggs in our society, and to pass information as, as when they are necessary to the police. For me, I have not been seeing them on the road, and the government has invested a lot of money acquiring equipment to support them. Determined that the tales of war in these affected areas are brought to an end, they appealed to residents in the affected area to assist security officials with information as they continue their investigations. It's the 35th day since the students of Ethermodel College were declared missing. Parents of the missing boys are still traumatized, pleading for government intervention. The incident no doubt has kept the lawmakers in that community on their toes. If you know, hello, hello. Hello, 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 ma'am. We cannot continue to exchange wars. What we want is resolution. What we want is peaceful and the security of your children. We are only protecting our own children. Because your children is our children. You put them in our care. And we can always make sure that we provide them with that uh, uh, required security. So we will not want to play to the hand of anybody. We are only trying to do this to ensure their safety. So please cooperate with us. Their children are no more talking to us. They say all of them are sick now. <laughs> so what are their demands? What are they doing? They say hundred million. <laughs> They should come and help us. I want my son. <laughs> I sent my son to that school. If I have the money they are asking for, I won't bring my son to that school. 100 million naira. We have been trying to negotiate, um, and you must know that we are not experts at doing this. They have been calling us. They have demanded for money. We have made offers. Some of them, some of us, have sold things to gather some money together we have offered them twice now they said no and joining us on the program to talk about kidnapping in this community is the lawmaker representing a constituency one in the Lagos state house of assembly let's go on this time out and when we come back you will be meeting my guests <laughs> 